Welcome, I'm Ian Baker, and today we get to meet your brand new Keystone Passport. So I'm gonna go over some of the basic functions of the unit as well as basic operation. Let's start off right up front on the power tongue jack, seeing as how this is how you're gonna connect and disconnect from your tow vehicle. So you'll see a couple different switches generally on the front. Um, they usually use the LCI power tongue jack, which is what we have here. So the one will be a light, that'll just be light right up front, on and off, very simple. Uh, this does run off 12 volt power. You will see your tongue jack control be right next to that. RET is for attract and EXT of course for extend. So if you want to raise the tongue, you will extend the jack. If you want to lower it, you will retract the jack. And this will help you in both connecting and disconnecting your tow vehicle as well as leveling your trailer from front to back once you are disconnected from that vehicle. Behind that are your two 20 pound propane tanks with the cover. Uh, this is actually the correct way that you want it to go on. If you ever take the cover off, you want your thumb screws to be closer to the camper. The reason being is if you're traveling down the road, the, the wind isn't going to lift this, if you, but if you forget to latch these and you're going the other way, the wind's gonna come right up here and rip your door up and off. Now, once you're camping, you can access your tanks right from here, as you can see. So if you need to open and close your tanks or change your selector switch, you can do that. But to make life a little bit easier for viewing, I'm just gonna take this right off and show you here. So, as I mentioned, two 20 pound tanks. Uh, of course, you know, you have your valves to open the tank. As for control, you will have your selector switch right up front. Depending on wherever that arrow is pointing, that is the tank that it's pulling off. You can technically put it in the middle and it will pull from both tanks. I personally like to do one tank or the other. The reason being, it helps me keep a better track of my propane. I know that when this one's gone, I still have one propane tank left, especially if you're out in the middle of the night. Last thing you want is both tanks to be empty if it is a cold night. So I recommend going from one tank to the other, but if you do want to put it in the center and draw off both, that is an option. Right behind that are rails for your battery here. Of course, you know, I have a, a jump box hooked up, but normally you'll have your battery located right there. And you will also see um, that will be tied into this right here, which is a battery disconnect. So if you flip this there, it will kill all 12 volt power. So you will see suddenly my power tongue jack no longer works. Now, if I flip it back, that will restore power. And there you go. Uh, also, quick note on the power tongue jack, folks. If for whatever reason this ever fails and you are stuck out at your campsite, uh, you can remove the, these, this grommet right here and there is a, a hand tool so you can manually move this up and down. Let's come around to the off camps, or rather the, the camp side here, and I'll show you your pass through storage. Um, this one does have a slam latch baggage door, which is really nice. So just as the name implies, it will slam shut. You also see it has a magnetic catch, so you can put it up just like so. When we take a look in the pass-through, uh, a couple quick things here. One, you will see the light. These lights are motion sensor, depending on which way you have it. So you either have on or motion sensor, and the little motion sensor is built right into the light, which is pretty cool. On the other side is solar. We'll get to that uh, in just a little bit, um, but you know we'll, we'll wait till we get all the way around here. Uh, let's drop down real quick. These are your Lippert PSX1 power stabilizer jacks. The controls actually are on the off camp side. And again, I'll show you those in a minute. Um, but you know, these are pretty simple and easy to operate. Again, you'll have a switch to extend them down. Bear in mind, folks, these are not leveling of any kind. You want the camper to be uh, completely level before you deploy these. And although they do have decent sized pads on there, if you're on really soft ground, I do recommend getting an actual jack pad, which will, you know, be about this big, just because it'll help disperse that weight a little bit area, a little bit better and give you more area uh, to spread that out on the ground so the jacks themselves aren't driving down into the ground. For the steps, you have standard pull-out steps, fold it up just like so, like that, and then kind of like it says, right, grip under bar, pull up, same thing. So to pull that out, you're going to grab right here, lift it up, drop it down, pull it out, and there you go. Steps are deployed. You'll notice this one does come with the power awning. Again, that will run off 12 volt. It also has an LED light that will also be 12 volt on there. Uh, some speakers on the passports. Those are controlled by that multimedia center inside. We'll get to that in a little bit. Somewhere on the exterior, you should have an electrical outlet. Uh, some of them will also have a spray port for outside water access. This particular model has an outside kitchen. Bear in mind, not all of them do. Again, it all depends on your floor plan. 
There is a rear mounted ladder. Passport has a fully walkable roof if you have to get up there for any kind of maintenance or inspection. 250 pound weight capacity on the ladder itself. If you don't want to get up on the ladder, folks, I completely understand. I don't love getting up there either. Uh, just know that every camping world across the nation does have a uh, free roof inspection. So you can bring it by a camping world. Someone will get up there, take a look, and let you know if you need any work on it. Uh, right in the back, you know, because this one doesn't have a bumper, you will see they mounted the spare tire uh, to a system that mounts right on the back wall. So it is still very easy to get to. Now, because you don't have a bumper, there is no sewer hose location back here to store that. It is actually up front. I'll show you when we get around to the off camp side, or rather to the front of the off camp side. <laughs> And then making our way down a little bit further, somewhere on the camper should be a black tank flush to wash out your black tank. When you do that, just make sure your black tank valve is open. Speaking of valves, let's drop down here. Uh, these ones are a little bit harder to see because they're tucked way back and underneath, but that is actually a good thing. They are tucked right up here into the underbelly. Uh, that helps insulate your valve so that if you're camping in cold weather, hopefully your valves don't freeze up on you and they will still operate. Um, but as, as I mentioned, you know, you do want to make sure that black tank valve is open if you are uh, using that black tank flush. Otherwise, in normal use, you can keep them closed. Um, and if you have, you know, uh, when you do go to dump, I do recommend dumping the black tank before the gray just to help wash things out a little bit better. You'll have a 30 amp detachable power supply. Uh, unless it's a bigger unit, it can have a 50. Either way, it will still be detachable. Uh, Dometic furnace on this unit, as you will see, they wrote hot all over this thing. And for good reasons, folks, because it does. It gets really hot. You don't want to put anything that is going to be flammable or something that can burn uh, up close up against it. Uh, you know, because again, we, we don't want a fire at the RV. Also, a lot of people will get insect screens and they are great to keep insects out. It can definitely help prevent some issues, but you only want to have that on when it is not in use. If you're going to be using the camper, you want to take that screen off because that screen can actually inhibit some of the airflow and you can uh, do more damage to your furnace than uh, good. So uh, you want to make sure that you're not using those screens while you're using your furnace. Coming up a little bit further is the Dometic water heater. So uh, with this particular unit, you will see you have a cap right here. Uh, cool thing about the Dometic is it does not use an anode rod, so you don't have to worry about changing that out. This one does run off propane and electric. And when I refer to electric, I'm referring to 120. So you will need either shore power or a generator to run the electric side of it, but you can turn both of them on at the same time for faster recovery. I'll show you those controls in the control panel inside. Last thing I wanna show you is a nice little convenience center here. So uh, a couple, couple quick things. Um, generally there will be a light, just in case you need to see things at night. Right there, your power stabilizer jack controls, right? One will operate the front two, the other one will operate the rear two. Do not be surprised if when you're holding it, only one side comes down. As soon as one of them uh, is, is good to go, the other side will come down for you. Key TV multi-source controller, so you can plug cable in there. It will feed to all the TV outlets in the camper, which is super, super simple to use. Uh, you also see outside water access, both hot and cold water there for an outside shower. Your water inlets for both your fresh and city. And of course, you can run your hoses right through here, as well as it has a little trough in case any of your hoses leak. Now let's briefly talk about solar. Um, you know, depending on the unit, it can either have a ZAMP system like this one has right here, or uh, it can use the Victron system. Um, you know, and again, it, it, there's going to be some options on there. It can be anywhere from 200 to 400 watts of solar on the roof. Uh, it may have an inverter. It may be an option. Again, it all depends on uh, the, the options that, that the current unit you have has selected. Uh, the inverter is great. They will have them listed as far as which outlets are inverted, so you know uh, which you know 120 outlets are working. And again, that will run off that 12 volt system, which is phenomenal. Uh, one more quick thing on that is somewhere on the outside, you will see an additional ZAMP plug-in. So if you want more portable panels, you can have even more solar there. And then right here is actually where your sewer hose will be stored. You can just open that guy up, twist it open, and that will give you a convenient spot to store, store your sewer hose. So once you have your RV set up, level, everything's good to go, that's when it's time to come inside and uh, take a look at the main control panel. So let's kind of start right up top. You will see your tank monitoring panel will be located there. Uh, it will start with your battery, so you have an idea where the battery is at, as well as the tanks. Bear in mind, folks, you may not have two black tanks or two gray tanks for that matter. So as you're checking your tanks, if one of them is just always empty, you probably just don't have the tank in the RV, but it is built for all of them. 
Uh, right down underneath that, as I mentioned, outside, the water heater runs off both LP gas and electric. And remember, that is 120 for that one. Uh, so you will need either shore power or a generator to run it on electric, but you can turn both of them on at the same time for faster recovery. Uh, your water pump, so if you're drawing out of your fresh water tank, if you're not running city water, you'll have to use the water pump. Now, when you turn this on, you will hear uh, the water start to cycle through. You will hear that pump running. Once it starts running for a certain amount of time, basically it will charge up that system. It will then stop. So if you're drawing off your water tank, you flip that on and leave it on. Right? As long as there's water in the tank, it will continue to draw it out. If you run out of fresh water, turn it off so you don't burn up the pump, so just keep trying to draw. But in normal operation, flip it on, leave it on. Uh, but then when you, you know, use some water, whether it's a shower, the sink, whatever, flush in the toilet, you'll then hear that water pump kick back on and again kind of recharge that system. Uh, then you'll see a couple light switches as well. Uh, porch is going to be for your awning. Then you will see ceiling light. Bear in mind that ceiling light switch may not turn on all the lights on the ceiling. Uh, so they will generally have individual um, operation for them, whether it's a push button in the center of a dome light or you know something like this where you have a motion sensor light as soon as you enter. Those will be operated independently. If you have slides, you will see, uh, they call it a glide room um, for the, for the uh, passport here. But those will be your slide controls, also an awning, retract, extend, um, you know, pretty, pretty uh, good language there, pretty simple and easy to use. Just when you are extending your awning, folks, make sure you don't overextend it. Uh, once it's all the way out, you'll want to stop it. Otherwise, because it will actually, what will happen is it'll go all the way out, and then it'll start coming back in if you hold that extend button. But what happens is it actually starts to roll up backwards, and that'll create all sorts of problems for your awning. You'll have pooling water. Uh, it's just not not a good thing. So you want to make sure that you don't overextend that awning where it starts rolling back up backwards. Uh, and then right down underneath, uh, and this may not be located here. It can be located somewhere else. It'll depend on your floor plan, but that'll be the multimedia center. Uh, as I mentioned, a couple different zones. You can see, you know, pretty uh, self-explanatory there on which one, uh, you know, zone one and two. Also HDMI port, USB port. Uh, has NFC technology, so it does pair up to phones super easily if you want to connect that to Bluetooth. Making our way in a little bit further, let's talk about um, dinette. So the dinette they use is pretty easy to make into a bed. You'll have your pedestals. Uh, one end will go into the flange in the floor. The other end will go into a flange in the table. That's how you will set it up. Uh, to make it into a bed, you'll take those out. You'll take this table right here and actually just drop it right on top of um, the, these black guys that are, that are sticking out that will help support it. Uh, and then you will take the back cushions, put it on top of the table, and that will create your bed. Um, you Again, you, there's a TV in here. Uh, it will run off 120. So uh, in order to operate the TV, you'll either have to have a generator, you'll have to have shore power, or you have to have an inverter and it has to be plugged into an inverted outlet. Uh, those are going to be the only way to run uh, a TV in here, so just keep that in mind. Your thermostat well, it should be located somewhere on the wall. This will operate both your uh, ducted AC as well as the heat. So you have a mode button there just to flip through whether you want cool, heat, or just a fan. So you have those options. Um, and then you can adjust the fan speed as well as your temp up and down. This is a GE unit, and again, it is very straightforward. Let's make our way back into the bathroom. Not a ton to talk about here. I do just want to quickly talk about uh, one will be the shower door and kind of how this functions. So with this one, you'll see that it has a little lip right here kind of on the handle. Here, I'll step in so you can come in a little bit closer. So what happens is that lip will catch just like that. And what you wanna do to undo that is you're gonna just pull it in slightly, right? And that will undo that so that it allows this to roll back up. Uh, now with this folks, it can be wet when you roll it up. It's not a big deal. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, gonna be very mold resistant so you won't have any mold or anything on there. It is good to go, roll it right back up, you are all set. For the toilet here, this one is a foot flush lever. So if you're not familiar with it, um, it, what you're going to want to do is if you push it just slightly, right, it will, and I don't have water hooked up, but it will start to fill up the bowl with water. So if you do push it down just a little bit, right, if you start to push it down more than that, what will happen is the ball right here will start to move, and that's how you actually flush that toilet is with that actuation. Now this does drop straight down into the black tank. There is no P-trap on it, meaning when you flush the toilet, if some sewer gas comes up, that is very normal. Uh, that's why, you know, we always strongly recommend to have black tank chemical in there, not only to help break down paper, but also for smells. Um, because otherwise, again, when you go to flush it, it's going to smell pretty bad. Now, 
uh, because when that when that ball shuts, it should prevent any smell from coming back up. Uh, and if you are considering to get smells, then you're going to want to do some troubleshooting, make sure your seal and everything right there is operating the way it should. Moving into the kitchen, you'll see a Norcold 12 volt refrigerator. Really, I really like the 12 volts. You know, I mean, as you saw, we're only running battery power right now, and my fridge is staying nice and cool. It does cool down much faster than your gas absorption fridges. Um, and, you know, with the added solar on here, it really is very uh, uh, energy efficient. Microwave hood, you know, again, pretty self-explanatory there. For the cooktop, this one does use a Furion cooktop. Um, it has a glass cover, folks. Don't, don't put a bunch of weight on here. Uh, you can use it as, as a prep surface, but don't push on it. Do not put any like hot pans or anything on here either. Um, as we lift this up, also with cooktops, you want to make sure that your, your pan isn't going over multiple burners. I've seen people try to like cover a couple burners don't do that, folks. What will happen is the flames will start shooting out of the side. It'll start, you know, heating up, burning countertops. You'll have all sorts of issues. Um, you know, and same thing if it's hanging too far off the front right here, right? The flame's going to come out and around. It can start, start melting your knobs. It's not quite as common on the three burner, much more common on a two burner cooktop, but just keep that in mind. You also have a couple options for your lights, for your light switch here. Uh, if you flip it to the, the, the one position right there, the single position, that will just light up your knobs. Center, of course, will be off. If you flip it down, it lights up your knobs and your oven light. So if you need to check out your oven, that is how you do it. This does have a spark igniter, which is really nice. Uh, and you, you can see that both up on the cooktop. And if you look down below, I'm not sure if you're able to see it in there, but this one, they do have a spark igniter in the oven as well. So you don't have to, you know, if you've been camping before and you have an older camper, you know, you get a match, you know, you put it in there and you sit there and wait for it and hope you don't get a fireball that takes half your hair off, you know, burns your eyebrows. The spark ignition does make it a lot easier. Also, um, you do want to make sure when you're lighting this that the that, uh, oven door stays open. I've had people that um, you know, that we'll, we'll have it like this and they just go to light it and spark it and ex assume that everything is good to go. You do not want to do that. You want to make sure there's a place for gas to flow. You also want to make sure it is fully lit before you close that door. So make sure if you're lighting the oven, the door stays open. Moving in yeah, a little bit further, uh, faucet, you know, super, super simple and easy to use there. This one is a pullout. Uh, so that does uh, make it really nice. There is a weight on the bottom. If you're not familiar, that's how a pullout works. So if it's getting stuck, you may, maybe because of what you've put underneath, that weight is hitting on something. So just uh, kind of bear that in mind. And folks, that pretty much sums up the basics of the Keystone Passport. Uh, if you're looking for something a little more in-depth on some of the things we've covered, we do have a vast library of videos available to help you troubleshoot some of those items. And if after you've watched those, if you're still struggling, uh, we also have an elite service team. So we have techs that are standing by to help you out, help you get through some of those pains to help make your camping experience not only fun, but easy.